You know, I've had a lot of different keyboards come across my desk recently, and this one. It has to be the most beautiful keyboard I have reviewed this year. It's not just because of one thing. Yes, it has a very nice brass weight. It literally looks like a polished gold bar. It also has a very, very nice and customizable rear LED strip. And also the case is completely screwless in design. It's actually the combination of all these different things that come together to complete the full look. And dare I say it, it actually looks like the coveted 7V as well. So the Hope 75 comes in two flavors. The Hope 75X, which has the exploded arrows and the navigational buttons, just like the 7V does. And the Hope 75S, which has the arrows and the navi buttons tucked in, creating a more compact form profile. Both are the traditional gasket mounting structure, providing a nice and soft typing experience. The one I have is the Hope 75S. I actually like the exploded arrows in the navi cluster, but at the same time, I don't really like the one new bottom row keys too much, so I prefer this S over the X. Plus, this thing just sounds really good as it looks. Check it out. I don't know about you, but for me, that feels like the perfect balance. It's not too overly deep and heavy, nor is it too high and bright. It's actually with a layer of EVA foam over the PCB. I've actually seen this done once before on a different keyboard, but I feel like EVA foam works similarly to PE foam, but it doesn't overly marbleize the sound. So a little bit more on that later on why PE foam does that. But this thing, it doesn't come cheap. If you opt for the standard version with an aluminum weight, it can be had for around $359. But if you do decide to go with this one, the one with the nice PVD polished brass, it's gonna set you back a cool $449. But after looking at it, building it, using it, if you're in the market for a premium 75% and you really like the Hope design, then you know what? Spend the extra $90 and go for the brass version. It's just gorgeous. Especially if you take the rear light strip and have it shine gold, the combination is just beautiful. I really enjoy typing on my Keychron Q1, but when I put that next to this, I realized why the Hope 75 is actually about double the price. It's like if you take a Honda Civic Si and you put it next to a AMG GT, yeah, they both have great performance, but they're just different cars. And that's pretty much the case here as well. So let's get into what this Hope 75S is all about. So the Hope 75S is from Feral Studios, who seem fairly new to this game. Inside the box, there are a bunch of stuff, like so much little stuff. You get things like stab washers, rubber pads for the top case, light blocking foam, pack of gaskets, rubber feet set, and also screws, of which I will cover what all these do later on. I have the hot swap version with this very orangey red hot swappable PCB. It's almost see-through actually. It's because this PCB is actually a thin 1mm PCB. Standard PCB is about 1.6mm thick, so you can see how thin this one really is. The super thin PCB with a lot of flex cuts, you can expect a very soft typing experience. Plus, I feel that thinner PCB boards generally have a bit more livelier feedback. And as usual for a board of this level, you have KO hot swap sockets, and the PCB is fully customizable through QMK and VIA. My sample actually came with the PC plate. This thing also has crazy amounts of flex cuts. Now I'm beginning to wonder, is this going to be too much? Thin PCB with flex cuts, soft PC plate with flex cuts. Um, well, what's interesting is this. This thing comes with also a lot of foam. You go through two layers of case foam, you got the plate foam, you got the PCB PE foam, as well as the PCB EVA foam. I was also told that this thing will come with two versions of the PE foam as well, but my sample actually only came with the standard IXPE. When I spoke to Ferro Studios, they let me know that the keyboard was actually designed to use the foams for optimal performance. I said, why? This keyboard is extremely solid with no resonance or ping whatsoever. I'm not gonna use any foam. And then this happened. All those flex cuts. Yup, it's very, very soft and very, very flexible. So much that it bottoms out when you type just normally with no foam. The foam in there helps not to just shape the sound, but it actually works like kind of like a semi-stack mount in this ultra-flexible configuration. 
Plus, the sound with no foam inside was weak at best. Not like a 449 keyboard should sound like. So now I get it why they told me to use the foam. Fine. Now moving on to the star of the show, the case. My Hope 75S features a milled black aluminum anodized case with nice chamfering on the edges and an overall very nice 75% design. As mentioned before, the screw points are hidden, so once you have it assembled, there will be no visible screws from the outside. The kit also will be available in multiple different colors, and you can check it out in the link in the description below. Then you move on to the bottom. You can get the Hope with the standard aluminum weight, which also fits right here, or with this gold bar. This is a beautiful PVD coated polished brass. It weighs 3.6 pounds or 1.5 kilos by itself. The 7V comes with a stainless steel weight, but if you recall what I covered in a video before, brass has higher density than steel, so with the same volume, it'll always weigh more. The feet were designed to be stuck to this little steel plate and then it's supposed to be magnetized onto the lower part of the case. However, mine came with really weak magnets, so I just decided to stick them onto the bottom case to just, you know, to avoid any accidental feet coming off and scratching the bottom of the case. I did bring this up to Ferrell's and they will be increasing the strength of the magnets for the group buy. Altogether, you get this beautiful black and gold package that just seems so classy and timeless. So let's put all this together and explore into what these different PCB foams do to the overall sound of the board, shall we? But before we do that, a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is an online service that helps you print PCBs through 3D printing or even CNC machining. If you're an aspiring keyboard designer or whatever else designer, you can take your design and simply upload it to get something made quick. Or if you have the source code for a PCB that you already have and need a replacement, you can also get that done as well. They can handle all types of PCBs from your simple single layer designs to multi-layer stacks. Beyond PCBs, if you want to try making your own case, PCBWay can machine that. And finally, if you want something just as simple as a plate being machined out of aluminum, palm, or whatever, they can do that as well. So check them out in the description below. Alright, so we start by removing this giant weight off the bottom. Then you see what the LED light strip is all about. There are so many little LED clusters on here, and that's probably the reason why the back LED strip looks so nice and seamless. This is fully programmable through VIA as well. You have to remove this in order to actually gain access into the case, so given this, this is not the easiest construction method there is, and if you're a beginner, it might be a little bit more difficult. But to get that screwless look, I guess this was a sacrifice that they had to make. The USB daughter board sits snug in the actual brass weight in the bottom. Both the light bar and the USB daughter boards are connected through a standard ribbon cable that feeds right into the bottom of the case. So you start by layering the two case foam layers into the bottom. Then place all these tiny little gasket foams all over the case. There are 30 in total. Yes, 30 gaskets. The instructions provided recommended that I put the gaskets directly onto the plate, but I've done it both ways and you could also put it on the case. It works the same. Plus, you have these tiny little rubber pads to put on the inside surface of the upper case to help align the plate and the PCB when everything is coming together. For this build, I decided to use owl stabs because I'm lazy and these work well with just lube, no holy modding or anything like that. So remember what I said about the thin PCB? Well, when you deal with 1mm PCBs like this on the Hope, you need to use the provided stab washers. Otherwise, the stabs will be loose and they rattle around. They just hook on underneath the stab and between the screw and the PCB. So for the first go at this, I'll be putting this all together with no PCB P foam or EVA foam whatsoever. For switches, I decided to use the Taxi carrots again. I don't know, I've really taken a liking to these lately and I really love their strong sound profile, so I felt it was perfect for this board. Before you put everything together, remember to put this tiny little poron light blocker underneath the light up logo on top of the case. This helps the light from like bleeding out and looking ugly. And for keycaps, I'm using some classic GMK white and blacks. With that, this is what the keyboard looks like. Just a very classy looking timeless keyboard. I, I actually really like it. And fully built, this thing weighs quite a bit. About 6.5 pounds or so, or 2.9 kilograms to be precise for the metric people. In comparison, my crazy heavy KBD-8X weighs 6.2 pounds and 2.8 kilograms. Yes, this thing actually weighs more than my KBD-8X with a brass weight and brass plate. To finish it off, I threw on some cool artisans from Hotkeys to complete the look. 
Now, with this thing fully built out, what does it sound like? Let's check it out. So overall, the sound of the Hope 75 with no foam is not bad. It has a very nice and balanced sound, I feel like. I think a word to really describe it is kind of clean and snappy. It has that snappy sound. So if you want the raw, pure sound of the keyboard, this is probably your configuration. But the keyboard kit actually came with two other foams, the PE foam and the EVA foam. And we all know what the PE foam sounds like, but what about the EVA foam? Should you use any of these at all? Well, that's what we're going to try to find out. Obviously, this is purely preferential, and if you don't like it, you don't have to use it, but hope this comparison gives you a good idea of what happens to the sound of the keyboard with PE foam and also even the EVA foam later. In my opinion, all three of these configurations sound pretty nice. Sometimes I really just want to say, yeah, this keyboard sounds no good. But I have not been able to say that so far. Um, maybe I just build them too well? I'm just kidding. The three different configurations, they sound different. And one can also argue that PE foam makes it sound like every other keyboard with PE foam. That is also a true statement. So what does PE foam do exactly? Well. I believe the community has a pretty good idea that PE foam acts like a filter of some kind to either emphasize or de-emphasize certain frequencies. You know what? That is the truth. Somewhere in the Philippines, a team of researchers decided to test the absorption and reflection coefficients of PE foam. What do you know? And the finds? It's pretty much what the keyboard community also have concluded. So let's take a look at the chart, shall we? If you look at the reflection coefficient chart first, it shows that PE foam has a very high coefficient of reflection when it comes to frequencies in the 400 to about 1000 Hz range. Then there's a severe drop off from 1000 Hz to about 1600 Hz, and then it goes back up again to reflect stuff from 1600 Hz to 2000 Hz. Now let's take a look at the absorption coefficient chart, right? The absorption chart shows that PE foam actually absorbs a lot of the frequencies between 1000 and 1600 Hz. Makes sense, right? If it's not reflecting it back, then it's probably absorbing it. So let's conclude that 400 Hz to 1000 Hz is amplified, 1000 Hz to 1600 Hz is reduced, and then 1600 Hz to 2000 Hz is also amplified once again. So if you take a look at the frequency subset table, what PE foam is doing is essentially amping up the lower mid-range, reducing the center mid-range, and once again amping up a little bit of the upper mid-range as well. Since keyboards do create an abundance of the lower mid-range tones, amping this area up is allowing us to predominantly hear that marbly jelly epoch sound. So now, hope this helps to put some science behind what that magical sheet of foam does in our keyboards. But what about EVA foam? Well, it essentially does a similar thing as PE foam, but I feel it targets different frequencies and different amounts of it. I couldn't find a scientific article about the reflection and absorption coefficients of EVA foam, but I feel EVA foam definitely has less of that jelly marbly sound, and to me, I feel it actually reflects back less of that low mid-range and absorbs less of that center mid-range, preserving more overall range of the keyboard's original sound and giving it a fuller spectrum. 
At least to me, the EVE foam helps the keyboard sound a little bit louder, but also a little bit more balanced. And I actually prefer this over PE foam, if you do have to use any of that. Ultimately, I built my Hope 75S with EVA foam. I felt that with these switches and keycaps, this was the combination that sounded the best to my ears and I wouldn't mind using every day. So what is my final thoughts about the Hope 75S? I feel like this is a beautiful, premium 75% keyboard that gives you that 7V vibe and aesthetic in a slightly different flavor. I really, really love how my black and brass version looks and that extra LED light bar in the back, it was that perfect amount of flair to complete the overall look of the board. At $449, it's not a cheap board in any sense, but if you are looking for a premium 75% and want to spend somewhere between $400 to $500, I would say the Hope 75S with the brass weight is a solid option for you. And the aluminum one? I don't know, it might be okay too, but honestly the looks of the brass one is actually one of its key highlights, so... The brass one also looks more like the 7V, I think. Remember, if you do get one, you don't have to use the P or the EVA foam, but definitely use the case and the play foam. Oddly enough, the difference was like night and day for both feel and sound. Plus, even with the foam, the flex is definitely there. It's a nice and isolated type of flex that's not too overwhelming and provides a very comfortable typing experience. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will have more content for you in the future. Thank you for continued support to grow this channel and much love to you guys. Thanks.